Hello, everyone. This is Mike from Virtual PM, just coming to you with another Azure DevOps training. Uh, I think probably a lot of people wonder, is there a way to create a query that you can actually see what's been completed in the last 14 days? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, so today I'm going to be going through how to create a basic query so you can actually see what type of items have been completed in your project in the last 14 days. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to go into my demo project and we're going to go ahead and select new query. From here, you're going to want to go ahead and kind of work through your query. As I always say, just go ahead and hit the uh, play button or the run query here, uh, just to make sure that your query logic is working each time that you change something. So for the work item type, we're going to keep it any. So bring back anything from your backlog that you know, any type of work item, whether it be a feature, epic user story. Next thing we're going to do is we want to change the state and we're interested in only the closed items. Now, if your project is using something like um, completed or another one of those finished states, you're going to want to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to run the query again to make sure that my logic is working. And as you can see, I see multiple items that, that, that have been completed in my backlog. Next thing you're going to want to do is add a new clause and you want to keep it and and the next thing you're going to put is state change date. So basically what this is, is it's looking at the activity in your work item and you can scroll down or start typing it in, but we're looking for state change date. And you're going to want to change the operator. So you want it to be either equal to or less than. And luckily, Azure gives you some options here, start of the day, minus one day. So basically the start of the day, minus one day, start of the day, minus seven days. So if you're looking for a full two weeks, um, Azure does give you the option to be able to change this uh, slightly. So you go ahead and select minus seven days and you can go in here and select a specific and type in a specific number of days. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put 14 days. I'm gonna run my query. And as you can see, um, I still have the same user items, but I know uh, user stories and work items, but I know that these have all been completed within the last uh, 14 days. We can go ahead and test this by removing that 14 and the four and running it. And as you can see, nothing's been completed in the last day, um, start of the day or minus one day. But if we put the four back to make it 14, then we get our items back. So you can do this for any type of work items. So if you wanted to actually look at specifically like just, you know, say that you guys are really basing your velocity and how much work you're getting done by the user stories like many teams do, you can go ahead and um, change the any to user story and then that'll filter out the for those particular type of work items. So let's go ahead and run the query. And as you can see, I got rid of the task and the other items that were on my list. But for this one, I want to show you guys what you guys could do if you kind of kept it as any. Run the query, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and save the query. Let's name it something very logical so everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. So work items completed in the last 14 days, right? And like any query, if you want to share it with a team member or put it up on your dashboard, it's got to be in your shared queries folder. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put a one here because I think I already have a query that's named this. So you, it also has to be a unique name. Okay, so now that it's been saved, you can go ahead and go to charts here and start creating some of your fun little charts. So one good thing that I like to use is show um, history over time. And a great chart to do that is the stack chart. If you go ahead and select here um, with the stacked by, uh, you can go work item type. Right now it's set for the last seven days, but you can increase that. So let's do the last uh, four weeks. So as you can see, um, someone who's looking at this, they can actually see that there were three user stories completed in the last four weeks. There were one, there's one bug that was completed and then there was one task completed. So this is really useful to be able to see over the history of the project, what's kind of been going on and what the guys have been working on and completing, okay? Uh, another chart that you can go ahead and create is a pie chart. Uh, you would wanna probably, for this particular one, I would definitely add on the uh, column for the story points. 
um, it's definitely advisable to have some sort of level of effort that you guys are putting towards your work items. So for my test one, it's story points. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. Once that's added, added in there, I go ahead and save query again. So then the chart will recognize that, that I've added an extra column. Go ahead and select new chart, keep it on pi. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to story points. And then the count of work items is probably what you wanna keep it as, but you can change it up, go sum of story points, the total number of story points that you've completed so far. Um, but you can also do that by the count. So some, some um, managers wanna know the total number of work items and then know the actual like total number of story points that they've completed. So as you can see here, we've had three of the three pointers completed and we've had two of the blank work items. So there was no story points to be um, added, but you can go ahead and click okay if you like your chart. And then to add these to your dashboard, you just simply click the ellipses and click the add to dashboard select the dashboard drop down select the dashboard that you'd like it to go to click OK and then now it's actually up on your dashboard and you can do the same thing for any of the charts that you create for your queries. I hope this has helped you guys I really enjoy making these videos um, if you like this please like um, also subscribe if you have any questions please feel free to add some comments or any kind of questions on some future queries I can definitely add that into one of my videos and help you guys out I appreciate it and I hope to see you guys next time thank you